On to the third example for lesson 2.6. So a particular bacterium takes 10 minutes to double. So we're talking about doubling time. That means you've got 100% plus another 100% to double it. So your base is going to be a 2. 1 plus 1 is 2. Um, it takes 10 minutes to double. It initially contains 50 bacteria. So that will be your initial value. So our population of the bacteria starts with 50. We're going to be doubling it, so our base is 2, and it takes 10 minutes to double. So I'm going to put a T for time on the top here, and, uh, and that is in minutes. T would have to be in minutes because my time here is in minutes. Uh, how long will it take for the culture to have over 1 million bacteria? So we want the population to grow to be 1 million, so we need six, six zeros on that. Okay, so if I were writing my let statements, I would let P be the population of the bacteria or the number of bacteria that we have, and T is your time in minutes. All right, so I'm just going to type that up, and then we'll continue. Now, at this point, we're ready to divide both sides by 50, and then we are going to um, take the common log of both sides to be able to solve that. So divide by 50 divide by 50, you're going to get uh, whatever that is. I think that's 200,000. So 200,000 is going to equal 2 to the exponent t over 10. And then we're going to take the common log, common logarithm of, of both sides here. And then apply that power law of logs. So we would have on this side, instead of uh, the, the exponent of t over 10, that comes down and multiplies the log of 2, the logarithm of 2. All right, at this point, um, it, we have a divide by 10 here. So I can multiply this side by 10 to undo that, which then means I have to multiply this side by 10. Okay, so that 10 and that 10 undo each other. And then we've got uh, 10 times the log of 200,000 is equal to t times the log of 2. We can now divide both sides by the log of 2. And then we can throw that into the calculator and see what it says about t. So I think when I evaluated that, I got... Let's see, t is approximately 199.32. Now, I defined that to be in minutes because my divide by 10 was minutes, so that's minutes. Now, we wouldn't normally say like 199 minutes. I would divide that by 60 to see how many hours I'm going to get. So 199.32 divided by 60, because there's 60 minutes in one hour, um, that's going to be about three hours. Um, and I don't have my calculator right in front of me, but you can throw that in your calculator. Three hours and 19 minutes was what I had as a final answer on my sheet when I did it before. So uh, three hours and 19 minutes. You might have to take that uh, the decimal part of your hours and turn that back into minutes again to get the minutes out of that. All right, moving on. Radioactive iodine has a half-life of eight days. It means every eight days it's going to cut its mass in half. So if we start at 40 milligrams, eight days later we should have 20 milligrams. And then eight days after that we're down to 10 milligrams. And eight days after that one we're down to five milligrams and so on. So how much will remain after 30 days? So I'm going to use M for mass. That does not look like M. M for mass. We start with an initial mass of 40 grams or sorry, 40 milligrams, and we're cutting it in half. So our base is one half. We're taking 100% and we're subtracting 50% so that we have 50% left. And again, our time is going to get divided by eight because we want to know how many groups of eight we can make out of our time. Our time in this case is days, so our uh, T is in days. So we should put some let statements with these. So when I'm marking your work on setting up application questions, I will be checking for your communication by setting up the let statements and being specific about the units. So T is time, 
in days. So I've got the units there. The mass of iodine, I should have probably put in milligrams if I want to be super specific about that. All right, uh, how much will remain after 30 days? That means I'm actually subbing in the T value here. So we're going to have a one half and we're going to put in 30 out of eight. So that you can put into your calculator. And I believe if you try that out, I got 2.973. Okay, so almost three milligrams is remaining there, 2.973 approximately. So therefore about three milligrams remains after 30 days. All right, and the next part of this says, how long will it take until only one milligram remains? So I'm gonna guess it's just a little bit more than 30 days. Um, but from there, we can find out um, by solving for the T. Okay, so give that a try. Put this on pause, try it out, and then you can check your work. All right, so when I went ahead and solved this, I got T to be uh, about 42.58, which means it's about 42 and a half, just a little more than a half, 42 and 13 hours. Um, to be able to decay to about one milligram. And there we have it.